So I'm Patrick. I'm here, uh, born and raised in the 54901, pretty much a one uh, mile radius from here. Um, oh, I think it's steady. I think it's steady. Yes. So I just was reflecting on uh, Veterans Day. Uh, my both my grandfathers uh, fought, you know, in World War II for some other military service, and um, you know, I wrote this, you know, kind of earlier today. I, I had it kind of percolating for a while, but uh, you know, I don't know. There's a title. Maybe the best thing would be I was not there. Um, so here it goes. So I was not there when you stared into the whites of British eyes at Bunker Hill, when you triumphed over Cornwallis at Yorktown. I was not there for the red coat assault of our new White House, for the stars and stripes waving over Fort McHenry at dawn. I was not there while the Confederates surrounded and besieged Fort Sumter, while the Antietam Creek turned red with your blood. I was not there as you landed in Europe to fight the war to end all wars, as you pushed towards Berlin and the offensive of 100 days. I was not there for the day that lives in infamy, for the storming of Normandy's beaches. I was not there fighting with you in the forgotten Korean War, surviving ambushes in Vietnamese jungles. I was not there to march with you through the desert, to liberate Kuwait with you and the coalition. I was not there to struggle with you in the graveyard of empires, to fight hidden insurgents in the Fertile Crescent, but I am here because of you, and as long as I am, I shall remember you. And I have another kind of continuing the theme if my phone would like to work. I usually, uh, pretty much every year, I try to write some sort of reflection um, on Veterans Day because of the uh, grandparents that I mentioned. Um, if I can find it. I wrote, or this would be more in specific um, to my, to, specifically for my grandfather. It would have been 103 this year, I think, if you were still alive. So the title would be 100 Years of Grandpa Keith. A century ago, you were born in childhood. The depression took your home. In adolescence, familiar woes made you stop school. At 19, you were called to shatter the axis. At 23, Uncle Sam called you home. Then, studying through meals and on shift breaks, securing your GED, master's, and PhD, getting snared by a real artiste, fathering four children, guiding up teen pupils, enhancing history in England and France, remaining in Oshkosh, Oxford and Wisconsin. 32 years ago, I met you. Then countless hours of racing around your old neighborhood on my big wheel, going to a store and picking out a reward locked behind the case, eating and gaming at Shakey's under the kaleidoscopic arcade lights, lessons in history, literature, politics and philosophy at Menominee Park, Activating my mind each meeting, pushing me to dream without end, showing me what I should do. Four years ago, you left this world. Ninety-six years were not enough. Three decades together were not enough. No matter how much time passes, what the seasons bring, where I journey or live, I will never forget. Your lessons in the park while feeding the geese, your laugh in the dining room on Franklin Street, your final ultimate words as you struggled to survive. Do not ever stop writing, and write I will until my final breath. For you, educator, veteran, warrior, survivor, dad, grandpa, biker, friend, happy 101st birthday, Grandpa Keith. And my final poem here is inspired by a workshop that uh, the Poet Lord of Oshkosh ran. Um, it was simply to write about a color. And sometimes having a very precise target helps me quite a bit. So this would be a kind of a novel sort of based in the fantasy world that I'm writing. Its simple title is Purple. Purple is majesty. Preemptive action. Sweeping reaction. Defying faction. Correctness gaining traction. Purple is rule through famine or feasts across west and east of greatest and least. 
of man, plant, and beast. Purple is ruler, chosen for life, facing problems rife, avoiding killer's knife, defined by strife. Who will don the color? The existence maulers who cast all into squalor, the conservation scholars who are preservation brawlers, through pages of thick tome, discover, uncover, the possessor of purple and throne. Thank you. Uh, so I have um, a lot from for my generation. There's kind of, obviously we I was you know among the uh, for, you know millennials got Facebook, got social media. Plus you know the addiction has been very um, you know apparent for me and my friends. So I have a a title of a poem inspired by kind of I think it was an article maybe on Slate or something where it was to glee flat to glee fresh or to doom scroll. You turn on the device: radio, TV, computer, smartphone, tablet. The medium differs. The messages do not. Political polarization, environmental degradation, mass shootings, international warfare. Turn away, you cannot. Despite how awful the sights, sounds, feelings, and conclusions. Endless segments, stories, shows, such as to doom scroll or doom surf. You tell yourself to check out, but you can never seem to leave. Yet there is a way to replace the destructive drive of tech and the addiction to despair and death. Tune your radio, scan the channels, surf the net, searching for happiness and love. One segment, story, or show at a time. Such is the glee fresh. You don't need to check out, and you certainly don't need to leave. And as a, uh, I think, a final poem here, more kind of on the more optimistic end. It's something I wrote for Labor Day. Uh, it's entitled Labor Day Round 136. First celebrated in the Beaver State 136 years ago, Labor Day recognizes what we owe to workers who fought battles great, to give wages good and fair, to create hours not so long, to prevent treatment wrong. To scare bad bosses everywhere. Over a century later, it may seem most victories that were won have been undone. Our workplaces are no dream. Labor and skill replaced, college degrees diluted, workplace complaints muted, fair wages erased. We must build upon the labor titans of the past. The status quo must not last. Let us craft a new labor dawn. Thank you.